gamble to set. I mean, that's why I think this whole G20 and uh, they've set up this financial stability board, which is going to regulate financial things around the world. And we have agreed to it. And it wasn't us, the people. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't voted on as if it was a treaty. Congress, I don't think, knows what they just the president just did. The president did it unilaterally just over when he was over there in London. You know, they all shook hands and agreed that they were going to be part of this financial stability board, which would then be able to impose regulations on anything financial. And it's a very broad spectrum of things that they're going to be covering. So that means, here's what I envision. This is what I think they're up to, that eventually they're going to say, they'll come around and check to make sure everybody's playing by the rules. And they'll, they'll look and they'll say, oh, well, you're issuing your own money. We think that that's not a sound business practice. And so you have to borrow from the banks. You know, it's, it's only sound to borrow from the private bankers. So they will get rid of any country that is attempting to issue its own money or that is borrowing from its own central bank. And there's precedent for this. The first central bank ever created was in Sweden, and it was a publicly owned central bank, and it was created before the Bank of England in the 17th century. And Sweden did very well issuing their own money through their own Um, I mean, they borrowed money from their own central bank, but because they owned the central bank, it was basically interest-free, and so basically they were creating their own money, even though on the books, you know, it might show as a debt. And then when they joined the EU, the EU told them they could no longer borrow from their own central bank. The same thing happened in Canada. They used to borrow from their own central bank, and they flourished. Things worked really well right up till the end of the, right up till the 70s when we had this, what was called stagflation, and everybody freaked out about inflation, and they blamed the bank for creating money that would fund the things that Canada needed when it that wasn't really what the fault was, but that was where the blame lay. And so, again, they said, even though you own your central bank, you can't borrow from it. You've got to borrow. From, they started borrowing from private, the private international bankers. Bank of England, the same way. They own their central bank and they borrow from the private bankers. Why? If you own your central bank, borrow from your own central bank interest-free, you know, re- they let them rebate the interest. So, so I think it's what possible to, that a legislative act like the Lisbon Treaty is very close to being totally ratified, which is dangerous. W- yeah. yeah what it, it, briefly, do you, do you know how to explain what the Lisbon Treaty is? Well, briefly, and we have three minutes and 43 seconds. Can we do the Lisbon Treaty in 30 seconds? Well, basically, it, it will solidify the EU, okay. and, but, but it's not a good model because the small countries there are being taken advantage of. I mean, assume that you had a global central bank. I think that's what they're aiming for, a private global central bank that would issue the global currency. Well, who gets this money? We will have to borrow, like everybody else, from this central bank, which will put us in debt. If we if we have trouble paying, we'll be in the same situation as third world countries. They'll cut back on, they'll impose all these conditionalities where we have to, you know, cut back on services and sell it, privatize all our industry. And they, the bankers who have the money, have the gold, will come in and buy all that up. Hold that right there. This is Kim Greenhouse with its rainmaking time. We want to invite you back with Ellen Brown. And uh, for those of you that are still on the conference bridge, stay on. We have another two minutes. We want to thank Dr. Kavari, who's running for governor of Florida. Uh, we want to thank Michael, who was on, and Jim, the who's in, in Vermont. Vermont. And, Michael and uh, we would like to come back and do this in a television studio and, and bring some governors and some, some of the other leaders of other states in the United States of America. And I really thank you for coming today. Is there anything else in closing? We have two minutes that you would like to say and let the public know. I do think it's very important to become aware of what's going on. That's the, we, Our salvation will be the Internet, I think. And understanding, the first thing we have to do is understand the issues, and the second thing we have to do is get together. We have to mobilize. And, I, I mean, I've been in many different groups, and we all kind of fight among ourselves, and it's very difficult. To, it's very difficult to form a grassroots movement. You know, it's one thing to have a leader at the top who tells you what to do, and then everybody falls into lockstep. But if you're trying, if you're sort of moving organically from the bottom, that's that's one big hurdle. Is So I think we have to work out ways to come together, figure out what our plan is, and you know, and get out there and do it quickly before their plan. Before the window closes. Yeah, exactly. So thank you so much for being here. I look forward to doing another show with you, taking it right from here. We're going to release this to the public online and then invite many, many more people. Thank you all. Thank you, Steve, in the engineering room. Thank you, Studio City Sound, Wendell (laughs) Hubbard, and thank you, Ellen Hodgkin. Is it Hodge? Hodgson. All right, let's try it again. (laughs) And a one, two, three. Thank you, Ellen Hodgson. 
You get to say Ellen no, Brown. No, you do it. Ellen Brown's good. Ellen Brown, we thank you very, very much. It's rainmaking time, everybody. Feel free to call 626-398-8652. We separate the wheat from the chaff. We have amazing broadcasting for discerning audiences. God bless you.